So one jazz standard that's particularly tricky but is also called all the time in jazz circles is the standard Stella by Starlight. It's a great tune. It's a beautiful tune played as a ballad. Sometimes I've heard it play even medium or even up, but it's a really tricky tune to understand. So that's exactly what I'm going to cover in this video today, a chords analysis of Stella by Starlight so that we can learn it, so that we can understand it better and we can improvise over it better. That's coming right up. Hey, what's up? It's Brent from Learn Jazz Standards, which is a blog, a podcast, and videos all geared towards helping you become a better jazz musician. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure that you do it. Sign up at the button below, and you'll get locked into all of the new content that we're coming out on this channel every single week. Like I said, Stella by Starlight, tricky tune, and I believe that if we can understand the harmony of jazz standards better, we'll be able to improvise over them better. They'll become much more clear and easy to understand. And Stella by Starlight by no means is easy to analyze, but I'm gonna walk you through my full-on chords analysis here. And I will say that there are more than one way to look at this song. This is just my particular way to look at the song, and I look at it from a few different angles. So without further ado, let's jump in to this presentation and let's walk through Stella by Starlight. All right, so I'm here behind my computer here looking at the Stella by Starlight chords analysis. So we're gonna be looking at this two different ways. First, we're gonna try to take all the chord progressions and chords in this song and try to relate them back to the parent key center. Now in the case of Stella by Starlight, I'm gonna circle it right here. Parent key center, two flats, that is B flat, right? That is B flat. So. B flat major that is. The other way we're going to try to think about this song is by different key centers. And that's where the color coding comes in that you're seeing here. Because really, Sell by Starlight strays pretty far away from B flat major. So it can be helpful to both think about it in relation to B flat major, but also understand the different key centers that we're dealing with. So quickly, let me go through the color coding with you so that we're all on the same page. Blue is concert B flat major. Like I said, the parent key center. Green is D minor. Orange is concert E flat major. Purple is concert F major. Yellow is concert G major, red is concert C minor, all right? So that's the color coding for you. Don't worry, I'm gonna keep going, keep going through this to remind you what those colors mean. But let's start with these first four bars. So we start with E minor seven flat five, A seven, C minor seven, F seven, okay? And the melody is Right? Okay, so we start with this E minor 7 flat 5 to A7, and it's green. I've color coded green because that's concert D minor, and I have below it says 2 5 of 3. Now, what's the 3? The 3, I'm talking about the parent key center, B flat major, right? So the 3 chord of B flat major is D minor, hence a 2 5 of the 3. However, it's unresolved because we're not actually resolving to the D minor seven. If you look into bar three, what chord are we playing here? C minor seven. So obviously we're going somewhere else, right? Um, get rid of that little box. Obviously we're going somewhere else. So that's an unresolved two five and you're gonna see this come up quite a bit, right? So two five of three unresolved because we're landing on a C minor seven to an F seven. Now I have that the bars three and four, I have them blue. That's the parent key center, B flat major, uh, because that is a two and a five of the tonic, right? Once again, though, it's unresolved because if you look ahead at bar five here, we're not landing on a B flat major, are we? We're not landing on a B flat major at all. So we have to figure out what that is, right? So now we have F minor seven, B flat seven, E flat major seven, a flat seven. Okay, so it goes. And then we, here we go. F minor seven. Okay, so what we have here is a two, five, one of four, okay? But we also have this A flat seven right here, which this is an important, uh, important one. Now the relationship between E flat major seven and A flat seven, that's like the four dominant seven of E flat major seven, right? It's a four dominant seven of E flat 
of, of E flat major seven, but really the A flat seven is also has its own function. And it's what we call a backdoor dominant because I'm looking ahead over here at this B flat major seven. And really this A flat seven is approaching this B flat major seven. It's called a backdoor dominant. I did a whole podcast episode on that. So I'm going to link that up in the card above so you can check that out later if you don't know what backdoor dominance, but essentially instead of a five chord to hit the B flat major seven, which would be F seven, we're doing A flat seven. That's because A flat seven actually will share quite a few uh, notes with an altered five chord, okay, approaching B flat major seven. So uh, we call it a backdoor dominant. So it resolves from A flat seven to B flat major seven. All right, you track with me so far? This is a confusing song, but if we start breaking it down and looking at it this way, it starts to make a little more sense, right? So we approach the four chord, which is E flat major, and then we had that A flat seven, which is the backdoor dominant, resolving to the B flat major seven, the tonic, the parent key center, right? But let's continue on because it doesn't stay there for very long. Suddenly we go into green, which as we talked about before, is the key of concert D minor. So it goes. Right, E minor seven, A seven, D minor seven. And so it's. Okay. And so what's going on there? It's a two, five, one of three, but this time it's resolving. Before it didn't resolve, this time it does resolve to D minor. That's the three chord to B flat major. B flat major seven, E minor seven, A seven, D minor seven. All right, now we got this fairly weird progression going on here, okay? Now we're gonna go to a B flat minor seven. So almost like we're taking the B flat major and turning this into a minor key. A set four, I think it's doing something a little different here because we have a B flat minor seven, E flat seven, and then it resolves to this F major right here. Okay, now once again, let's start thinking about this. How does that make any sense, right? And I have this purple, it's the key of F major. The reason I say that it is, is because this is what I would call a two five backdoor dominant right here. So basically this chord progression is going here. And why do I know that? Because again, if we look at this E flat seven, E flat seven, it's a whole step down from F major seven. So it's the flat seven. And I know that an E flat seven is the backdoor dominant that leads into F major seven, right? It's the one that's substituting the five chord from going into the F major seven, but it's preceded by a two chord, hence B flat minor seven to E flat seven. So we have a two in front of that backdoor dominant leading to F major seven. That's why I call it F major. Now you'll notice that I'm trying to really, I have down here five major seven. I'm trying to relate this F major seven back to the parent key center of B flat major. It's kind of hard to do that because the five chord, as we know, is never major. It's always a dominant seventh chord. So this is just an attempt here, but it's good to know at least what tone it is of the apparent key center of B flat major. All right, so that's where we're at so far. And then it goes, we're on the F major seven. Okay, so F major seven, the five major seven, and then we're gonna go another E minor seven flat five, a7, which again is an unresolved chord progression, a two, five of three unresolved. And then we're gonna turn that A7 flat nine into an A minor seven flat five. That's starting right here. And then we play a D7 flat nine. Now this D7 flat nine, what's that gonna be? That's obviously the five chord of something. We have a two and a five, two, five, resolving here. Now this is where things are a little bit weird. I have this color coded in yellow. Yellow means the key of concert G major. Now obviously this is not a G major right here. What is this chord right here? It's a dominant seventh chord. It's a G7 flat 13. That flat 13's in the melody. Um, yeah, that's just the way it was composed. Uh, there, there's nothing There's nothing specific I can say there other than we have A minor 7 flat 5, D7 flat 9, which would make you think that we're going to land on a G minor, but we don't. We land on a G7 flat.
flat 13, okay? Now, the real reason I think that this happens is because look at this G7 flat 13 and look at the next chord, C7, C minor seven, right? Really, this G7 flat 13 is acting as the five chord of C minor seven, right? Because what's the five chord of C minor? It's G7 flat 13, that five to one relationship right there. But it's being approached by its own two five, A minor seven flat five, D7 flat nine, G7 flat 13 for two bars, resolving to a C minor seven. Okay, then, oh, this C minor seven, by the way, I have in blue, and you'll see why. Because all of this really is relating back to here, B flat major seven. So we're on C minor seven here. We just resolve to it. Then we hit a chord, A flat seven sharp 11. The sharp 11 is in the melody. Now, why do we play that and why do I say that it's part of B flat major? Well, once again, we have another backdoor dominant, right? A flat seven is a whole step down from B flat and A flat dominant is a backdoor dominant to B flat major as we discussed earlier in the tune, right? So A flat seven sharp 11 is really a backdoor dominant replacing the five chord to lead us to B flat major seven. So we have a C minor seven to A flat seven. So C minor seven is just the two chord of B flat major to A flat seven sharp 11 to B flat major seven. Very interesting, right? Okay, now moving on, we have green again. So D minor, we're basically starting as if we're starting at the top of the form again with the melody. It goes. Okay, so E minor seven flat five, A seven flat nine. So it's a two five of three, but it's unresolved. And then D minor seven flat five, G seven flat nine. Red is the key of concert, C minor. That makes sense, right? So we would think we would land on the C minor, but we don't. We land on a C minor seven flat five, which indicates it's a two chord of something to the F seven flat nine, B flat major. All right, so this, D minor seven to G seven right here. That's a two five of two unresolved. Two chord being C minor seven. All right, then we get here, and it's I call this a, a hybrid two five one. The reason I call it a hybrid two five one is because the two chord here, C minor seven flat five, indicates that we're going to go to a minor key. However, the one chord is not. It's a major key. So I call this a hybrid two five one. We have a C minor seven flat five. F7 flat nine, so your ear thinks it's gonna hit the minor chord, the B flat minor, it doesn't. It ends on a B flat major seven. So I call that a hybrid two five. And then if you look at bars 25 through bars, well, 32, we have a cycle of fourths. All these chords are moving in fourths. E minor seven flat five, A seven, D minor seven flat five, G seven, C minor seven flat five, F seven flat nine, B flat major seven, all that cycling in fourths, all right? So kind of a tricky song. I would say the main takeaways from all of this is we have lots of unresolved two five chord progressions in different key centers. And yes, you can relate them all back to the parent key, but it's best to think of them as separate and together with a parent key. So different ways to look at it. Another big takeaway would be backdoor dominance. Lots of backdoor dominance being used in this tune. And another cool takeaway is the hybrid two, five, one. That's a great example. And that shows up in other tunes. For example, like I Love You by Cole Porter. That's one that you definitely see this happening in. All right, so hope that was helpful, maybe gave you a little idea. Could be worth re-watching some of this stuff. And hey, if you really like this sort of a thing, I do this in my ebook and companion course, The Jazz Standards Playbook, where we study 10 different jazz standards like this. And this is only one of the things we do. We also go over guide tone charts, 
chord maps, we do improv uh, lessons, and also there is a companion course available. We, we do have a community of folks that are supporting each other and uh, posting their assignments in the community discussion board. It's a lot of fun. Everybody's learning together. So if this is something that you're interested in and learning more about jazz standards, especially hard ones like this, check out the jazz standards playbook dot com or I'll also link that in the description below and you can get locked in to that ebook and companion course. All right, so here is my question I want to ask you today. What ways do you analyze Stella by Starlight? Are there some things that you missed or there's some that I missed or there's some other ways that you might like to look at it? Feel free to post that in the comments uh, below. Would love to hear from you. All right, so that's all for today's video. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.